Streets closed, pizza boy. Uh, why, dude? Thousand horsepower. I don't know why. Why not? I don't know why. Why not? We love Japanese tuner cars around here, and today we're gonna look at some of the gnarliest. Most bonkerest JDM cars built by tuning shops in the 80s and 90s, the golden era, before everything went south. I'm James, this is The Monolist, and this is the show where we put car crap on trial. The d d d d list Big thank you to Off The Record for sponsoring today's video. Picture this, it's the holidays, and it's present time with the family. We love you, they say, as they give you the greatest present you've ever seen. I mean, these presents are gonna change your life. So now it's your turn to give presents. And what do you got for them? Nothing, because you spent all your money paying for tickets. So if you wanna avoid this very specific scenario, then download the Off The Record app today. With over 70,000 successfully contested tickets, Off The Record is here to help. They're so confident, they even offer a money back guarantee if they aren't able to reduce the points or keep that ticket fully off your record. That's where they get their name from. So this holiday season, spend money on presents for the family, not tickets. Register now and use code DONUT to save 10% off your first ticket at offtherecord.com slash donut. Today we are talking about Japanese cars built by Japanese tuning shops. Our in-house JDM expert, Jimmy, put this list together. So if we skipped your favorite car, you can slide into his DMs. So without further ado, let's get into it, dude. One of the earliest, most legendary tuning shops in Japan was a company called HKS. I'm sure you've heard of it. In 1983, they built this, the Celica M300. Now, a lot of the tuning companies at this time were obsessed with a little thing that I like to call top speed. Shops would build cars and take them to the Yatabe test track, a massive oval circuit where insane speeds were possible. And for years, companies tried to break 300 kilometers per hour in a Japanese car. The Celica M300 was the first car to do that. It was a first gen Celica Supra with built internals twin turbos, and a big old fat old intercooler. All in all, this Selly Welly made 600 horsepower and easily smashed the 300 kilometer barrier. And that is how our list begins. But spoiler alert. This won't be the last time you're gonna see the letters HK and S on this list. Besides top speed, a lot of Japanese tuning houses were getting into drag racing in the early 80s. Enter Kakamoto Racing, an exhaust shop that liked to build fast cars. If you build fast cars, you sell a lot of exhausts. That's just business 101. Thanks for taking my class. In 1984, they built this sick S30Z with a big, fat, meaty tires, a streamlined body, and a bore down engine making 350 horsepowers. Now that's not bad, but I'm including it on the list because Kakamoto kept refining the car over the years, and today, it still exists with a twin turbo setup making 750 horsepowers. The next car on this list might look familiar because it's one of the most legendary cars from the Midnight Club. Like, the actual Midnight Club. That Midnight Club. The ABR Hosoki S130Z, AKA the inspiration for the Devil Z in Wangan Midnight. It started life as a regular old Nissan 280Z, but ABR slapped a couple of turbos on it and gave it an absolutely wicked body kit. They took it to the Utabe test circuit where it clocked a top speed of 341 kilometers per hour. How many Harris pairs did it have? 650. And of course, we can't talk about 1980s Japanese tuners without mentioning Nismo. That's Nissan's in-house tuning shop, and they've made some pretty cool cars over the years, but one of our favorites was the R32 GTR Group A version. This was a literal Group A race car that you could buy directly from Nismo and take racing. You know the CalSonic GTR from Gran Turismo or 
the Tyson GTR, or, or even the Axia R32 Group A car. These were all built on the Group A chassis sold by Nismo. So you're saying, James, how much does it cost to buy one of these sick old little bad boys? $500,000. Okay, cool. Um, James, how much horsepower did it make? 550 horsepowers. You're gonna see more GTRs on this list, but we had to mention this one because it's one of the reasons the letters GTR mean so much to us. But guess what? It's the 90s now. Things are about to start getting a little bit more insane. Also, we're gonna talk about another Supra. The second Supra on this list was built by none other than the same people who built the first one. HKS. They wanted to build the baddest pro stock drag car in Japan. Sick! So cool! So they created the HKS Drag 70 Supra. It's a Mark III Supra that makes a totally sensible 826 horsepower. Why? Because it needs 826 horsepower to do the quarter mile in under eight seconds, that's why. And it's not even the last HKS car that we're gonna see on this list. It's not even the last three letter tuning company on this list. You ever heard of a little company called June? In 1991, June Auto participated in a land speed competition in the Bonneville Salt Flats in Utah. They had one goal, make the fastest Nissan Z32 in the world. Did they do it? Yeah, they did. This 300ZX with no headlights went 262 miles per hour, making it the first Japanese car to break 400 kilometers per hour. And it did it with a 1200 horsepower V6 in 1991. Another three letter company that we can't not talk about is Tom's. They're an officially recognized Toyota tuning company. Their steering wheels are expensive. And they've made a lot of winning race cars over the years. But in 1994, they took a brand spanking new Mark IV Supra. Bust out your bingo cards, cause this is the first 2JZ on the list, baby, and created this for the Tokyo Auto Salon of that year. They called it the T20 LMS Supra. This was a race inspired street car and it honestly might be one of the best looking cars on this list. I mean, it looks like a freaking Ferrari F50, dude. All in all this Tommy boy, shut up Richard, makes a respectable but not earth shattering 650 horsepower. Not bad for a street car. But you might be wondering if that 1200 horsepower Z32 is gonna stay at the top of this list forever. Well. In the mid 90s, HKS still had their sights on drag racing. But what car would they choose as their flagship dragster? A 180SX. They shoved an RV26 under the hood of an S13 and of course, it was adorned with the iconic oil slick livery. So how much power did it make? Will this be the new king of the monolist? Well, it made 1168 horsepower, so close to the top. But here's the thing, power isn't everything when it comes to Japanese cars of this era. In America, tuning companies became obsessed with building the highest horsepower cars imaginable. But in Japan, shops were also focused on a little thing called aerodynamics and her sister handling and their stepbrother, aesthetics. So as we make our way through the rest of the 1990s, keep in mind that absolute horsepower wasn't the main focus for most of these shops. Plus the monolith told me that I had to include a lot of these cars or else it would sneak into my room again. So the monolith somehow is my conservator. It controls my money. I'm not allowed to see my friends unless I ask it, and it always says no. Hashtag free pump free. Ari Amamiya AZ1, an AutoZam AZ1 with a 20B rotary engine that puts out 400 horsepower in a baby car. Here's a shot of me sitting in this thing. We have that, right? Yes. 
Here's me sitting in that car. Imagine it with 400 horsepower. Craft Racing GT300 AE86. No, they're not just a macaroni and cheese company. They also make sick Toyotas. 325 horsepower. Veilside Supra. Legendary, legendary aftermarket company. They built this ridiculous chandelier-esque Supra for the 1997 Tokyo Auto Salon, and it made 830 horsepower. But if show cars aren't your thing, they also built this, an R32 GTR called the R1. It was built for pure speed, it has tiny 15 inch TE37s on all four corners, so it can fit big old meaty old drag slicks. And it makes a very respectable 1,000 horsepower. Speaking of GTRs, you also had the HKS 0R. 600 horsepower, a Pexi A450. It looks weird and it was designed to compete with the HKS 0R. 450 horsepower. HKS 0R sounds like a soda. Trial GTR R33 Speedwagen. 850 horsepower, why not? Blitz, love Blitz. Make very cool wheels. Shouts to Adam LZ. Congrats on the ride, brother. 890 horsepower. I don't know why. Why not? I don't know why. Why not? June Super Lemon R33 GTR. Streets closed, pizza boy. Oh, uh, why, dude? 1,000 horsepower. That's why. Because I ordered mushrooms and pepperonis and 1,000 freaking horsepower in a yellow car. What's that? <laughs> Oh, you're sick of GTRs. Okay, fine. <laughs> BR Mitsubishi GTO. BR looks like beer. In America, we know this car as the 3000 GT or the Dodge Stealth. Jackie Chan freaking loves these cars. BR took one of these puppies and managed to squeeze 750 Percy Brewers out of it. What's that? You want a Supra? <laughs> Abflug S900 Supra. It makes 900 horsepower and it looks dang weird doing it. All right, and now a car that I've been dying to talk about, itching to discuss for this entire episode. I'm of course talking about the top secret, V12. Supra. Now, Top Secret is one of the coolest companies to ever exist in any category ever in the entire world. They somehow managed to fit the V12 from a Toyota Century plus two turbos under the hood of a Mark IV Supra. It also looks insane. It's gold, okay? ECU tuning still was in its infancy when they built it, so it ran off of two ECUs and four electric water pumps to cool it down. Now, you're probably wondering, how much power did it make? Well, sirs and madams, it made 930 horsepower. Pretty good, but it still can't beat that Z32. But now we're entering the 21st century. And friends, I'm sad to say that the golden age of Japanese tuners is approaching its end. In the 2000s, Japanese car culture began to shift away from top speed and quarter mile times, and instead moved towards drifting and time attack, which were growing in popularity. It also didn't help that many of the 90s flagship Japanese sports cars weren't being sold anymore. They stopped making the Supra. They stopped making the 300ZX. They even stopped making the Skyline. So naturally, this meant that there were fewer over the top high horsepower shop builds. I mean, sure, you had the HKS Alteza that made nearly 600 horsepower around the circuit. Jimmy uh, has the wheels off of this car. You also have the top secret 350Z, which spit out 690 horsepower. I regret putting that first one <laughs> right here, because you guys can't really see. I would even mention the Escort Evo, an outrageous looking Evo 9 that pushed a thousand buff Percy Percy's, but still, none of these cars were able to touch the 300ZX Bonneville speed car from 1991. And it makes you think that the glory days of JDM tuning shops are over. But what if I told you that the heyday ain't over? There's a pretty big company that I haven't mentioned yet, Gretti. In 2012, for the Tokyo Auto Salon, 
which is the event responsible for nearly every cool car on this list. Gretti featured an R35 GTR with an experimental twin turbo setup and a wide body kit and a clamshell front end and it produced 1,250 hearse purrs. Finally, we are back on the board, baby. There is hope for the 21st century. In the last 10 years since this car came out, a lot of exciting stuff has been happening in the Japanese car world. And with the A90 Supra, the GR86, the return of the Z this year, uh, there's a lot of potential for Japanese tuners to come back in a huge way. And guess what? I know some of them. I got my ear to the grindstone, baby. It's happening. Some people say that the glory days of Japanese tuning houses are over, but I think that we're just getting started. So in conclusion, Japanese tuning shops need to not chill out. They need to continue to not chill. They need to heat up and they need to keep building awesome awesome cars big announcement the donut underground has a shirt now we got a shirt now if you don't already know the donut underground is our membership club for super fans members get access to behind the scenes videos a discord server exclusive stickers merch discounts and now there's a shirt, a freaking shirt. It has the same colorway as our new stickers, which members voted on a couple of months ago. You get input into what we make. The shirt is $25 and only available to underground members. To find out how to join, click the join button down below on this video or on our channel page, or for iOS users, check out the link in the description. We got a shirt. Thank you guys so much. Uh, for watching this video. There are a million tuning shops and I know we skipped a bunch of them. If you want to learn about another legendary Japanese company, check out this uh, episode of my other show, Up to Speed on Rocket Bunny. Check out this episode on RWB. Follow Donut at Donut Media and me at James Pumphrey across all social media. I love you.